guys, Andrew Henderson, Nomad Capitalist, here in uh, Tibet, Montenegro, at the Porto Montenegro uh, Resort Complex. One of the big things that's been uh, bringing a lot of tourists here to Montenegro. I wanted to talk specifically today about banking uh, and clear up some questions we've been getting, uh, specifically on banking in the Caribbean, uh, banking in the Cayman Islands, and uh, discuss whether or not that's a good fit for your money or for your business's money. Um, you know, as I see it, in uh, the year 2017 and beyond, uh, post Panama Papers, post FATCA, post CRS, post all these different things that are going on in the banking world, um, there aren't too many reasons to be banking in these traditional offshore havens. And I'm a lot of times telling people to get out of these places, um, not only because I've seen people have problems, um, but because I see more problems to come with just kind of watching the trends. Two reasons that people, I think, have an interest in the Caribbean in particular, uh, and other, some of the other islands, Vanuatu and the Marshall Islands and that kind of, those kind of places, um, is number one, there's just this kind of intrigue, or, or maybe that's all that they know about. Um, and number two, remote opening. So number one, obviously, if you're just getting started in offshore, you want to open a bank account, people throw away the Cayman Islands. Uh, that's always one of the big ones that's discussed. And for someone who's just kind of new, it's Switzerland, it's Cayman Islands, that's just what you do. There are plenty of more options, and right here in Montenegro could actually be one of them. Um, but the second thing that people uh, come to me and ask about banking in the Caribbean is they want remote bank account opening. Um, which is where you send a bunch of forms to the mail through FedEx and you get an account open without actually having to go to the jurisdiction. That really doesn't happen that much in the onshore world. Occasionally you'll find certain banks um, in some developed countries where you can open a bank account without going there. Sometimes it's kind of a hybrid solution where you go somewhere that's more convenient than the, than the actual country. But in an era of enhanced know your customer, in an era of enhanced anti money laundering, when banks uh, like HSBC and, and others are going through what's called de-risking, where they're getting rid of customers that pose risk, in my mind, remote bank account opening doesn't work. And so that, in my mind, blows one of the big holes in the benefits of banking in the Caribbean, um, where you didn't have to go there. Well, nah, there's not so much benefit of that anymore. And even if the banks themselves don't cause problems, you've got... Um, the United States, for example, giving some of these Caribbean banks difficulties where some of them can't get a uh, U.S. dollar correspondent account, which means you can't deal in U.S. dollars. Um, it's harder and harder to uh, move money in and out. When you want to move your money out, they may give you problems, or they, the, the developed country that you want to send your money to may give you a hard time and want all kinds of paperwork to explain what the money is, how it's earned before you accept it. So the Caribbean, not necessarily the greatest place right now. Um, the Cayman Islands are kind of their own ecosystem, and the Cayman Islands have kind of become the high ticket, or I guess they always really were, the high ticket of, of the banking world, where um, setting up a company in the Caymans isn't cheap. Setting up a bank account in the Caymans isn't cheap. Um, there are some gold solutions that are relatively in line with the rest of the world, but, um, you know, the Cayman Islands never wanted to be the cheap option. The BVI was a cheap option, Belize was an even cheaper option, and then all these other places around the world, like Marshall Islands, Seychelles, Gambia, popped up trying to compete basically with Nevis and the BVI uh, in some of the places in the Caribbean. Uh, and so the Cayman Islands never wanted to go to the game. They were always on a higher level. And as a result, it's more expensive. If you can afford it, not a bad option. Um, I do think that the trend still is going to onshore. And if you're a U.S. citizen, if you're, if you're dealing in certain arenas, maybe the well-known stigma of the Cayman Islands, whether it's well-learned or not, uh, may be a reason why I would just go onshore. If you can bank in Singapore, if you can bank in uh, the European Union, if you can bank here in Montenegro, if you can bank in places that are onshore, and that, uh, okay, they do require a visit, uh, but they do give you better service, they get to know you a little bit better, they have better line line banking, they have lower fees, um, to me, that knocks out the Caribbean for almost everybody. I look at the Caribbean as a backup account. The Cayman Islands, I would still probably favor somewhere that's more onshore over the Cayman Islands. Um, not in every application. I think for some applications, if you have the money, the Caymans could work very well, but not for everybody. So um, that's why I think that onshore is really starting to uh, replace uh, offshore. Uh, you can 
still go offshore. The, the act of going offshore, reducing your taxes, protecting your wealth still works. Just different jurisdictions, and so that's why uh, some of the old school ones don't really work so well anymore. Uh, subscribe to our channel here if you're looking for more on banking, if you want to learn how to keep more of your money, protect your money, create wealth faster, and of course, nomadcapitalist.com with hundreds of articles on banking and uh, internationalization.